All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us for this Polaris Symphony proposal tool demo. My name is Lori Jennings and I'm the Polaris program manager. Joining me today are members of the Polaris acquisition team and personnel from Apex Logic who manages the Symphony system. All attendees are in a listen only mode. Questions may be submitted via the Q&A pod on your screen. We will try to address as many questions as time allows. Please note, this session will only focus on how to use the Symphony system. Questions about the RFP should not be submitted during the session and will not be responded to. Stay tuned for an RFP question and response document on SAM.gov. I will now turn this over to the team from Apex Logic. Hi, thank you. Okay, uh, my name is Jennifer, um, and I'm going to go ahead and give you a demo on how to use Symphony. Um, I have Christina um, on the line as well to um, help with any q and I'm sure you've seen her come up. It's already solicited through Symphony and had any questions through the help desk, um, but she does know the system well and uh, is able to answer any questions that you have there. I do ask though that you please wait until I get through the demonstration. Um, I think I'm going to answer the majority of questions that you have. Um, if you um, still have questions after the demonstration, we have a ton of material um, in the help. Um, I will show you how to access that. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen right now. Um, we will see. Um, so we have a ton of information, videos, um, et cetera, um, that you can go in and find, and then you will be able to access that. If you still have questions, um, after reviewing all of the material, uh, you can um, go ahead and send us a ticket and there's a link uh, in the help desk to uh, enable you to do that. Um, please note that we do respond to tickets um, within four hours, most of the time, a lot sooner than that. Um, if for some reason you send us a ticket and you do not re receive a response um, within four hours, please check your spam um, and uh, see if it's in there a lot of times uh, things will go to your spam. It's coming from client.support at apexlogic.com. Uh, so you need to um, make sure that it's it's not in there um, because I can pretty much with 100% certainty say that we did answer your ticket. So um, I ask that you, that you do look in there. Um, please note that I do have um, polaris.app.cloud.gov. This is the URL. If you have not, um, proposed on any previous um, Polaris solicitations and you um, are not familiar with it, this is where you will go. If for some reason you have an OASIS contract, it is separate, you will need to register in here, but please make sure that you are in the Polaris URL. Many times people have come in and um, said that they're not in the system or they've lost their submission, but it's actually because they were in a different, a different URL. <laughs> So um, please know that um, you did not lose your submission, that it's still here um, as long as you're in the correct URL. Um, uh, we can only though answer any questions um, for um, through the help desk that are technical in nature. If you have any questions about the solicitation, um, I'm gonna show you where you can enter them uh, into Symphony. I know in the past that um, they've you know, used email, but they're gonna go ahead and use Symphony now to collect all of the answers. Uh, the benefit being that you'll be able to see your answers, um, uh, you know, questions in there and um, as well as maybe the answers as well. Um, so let me go ahead and just give you a quick disclaimer. We um, are not your competition. We do not bid on any IDIQs or contracts. Uh, we do not subcontract to anybody um, who is in a contract vehicle. Um, so know that we are just here to hopefully make your lives easier. Uh, as well as the program office and provide them with the tools they need to more efficiently and effectively run their, their contract vehicle. If you have any feedback, um, positive or, um, or negative, um, please you know, don't hesitate to send us an email through the help desk. Um, we do look forward to your, uh, your comments. Um, and if you have any, any, anything that you think could improve the system, we're always looking for, for additional feedback. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, get started now. So you'll see right here, I have that on here. I'm not going to demonstrate in that. I'm trying to get rid of the, there we go. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate in this. Obviously, it's a live system, so we don't want to do that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and shift over to, to this. Oh. Um, 
get out of there real quick. Okay, so um, you will know that there is a 15 minute timeout on the system. Um, if you're using the system and you're clicking around in it, we're not gonna time you out after 15 minutes. Uh, but if there is um, detected inactivity, um, then we will we will log you out for security purposes. Um, that 15 minute time frame is specified by uh, GSA's um, ATO, which um, Symphony has a moderate. So please be assured that uh, your data is safe. Um, this is the screen that you will come to after you accept the fact that you are in a government site. Um, you'll see email address, password. Um, you'll notice that the sign in button is not available yet um, until you enter in a valid email and your password. Um, if you need to register, you would simply click the register now. If you had forgotten your password, um, you would click that and we would go ahead and send you a link to reset your password. And again, if you need some help with registration, click this. We do have help that is pertains to how to use the website that you will find in more detail inside once you're registered. Um, but this information right here will give you um, a link to all of the articles, videos, and general information. I'm gonna go ahead, um, I was going to hold off on registration and, and I'm gonna go ahead and register real quick um, and show you how to do it now. But I ask that you do not follow along, but just watch and, and we'll hopefully try to keep it really simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and register. Um, what I need in order to register, I'm going to um, provide that information. So I'm gonna put in my URL and I am, I'm using companies that are most likely not bidding on, um, on Polaris, and you will see why in a second. Um, but uh, please know that if, if, if any of these companies are on, we're sorry, um, but we didn't think that you would be part of a small, small business solicitation. So I'm simply gonna enter in my, um, my email address. At this point in my email, um, I should have um, a validation code that was emailed to you. Um, and then you would just simply uh, add that in. If you have not received your code, please again, check your junk mail. If it's still not there, you may have inadvertently entered in the wrong, the wrong email address. So we ask that you, we ask that you try again. So I've just entered in my temp code. And then you notice we have these three questions. And this is for multi-factor authentication. You do need multi-factor authentication for Symphony. Um, you can simply use, um, SMS, so we can send a message to your to your cell phone that'll uh, that'll send you the six-digit code that you're looking for. If you would like to use a uh, authenticator app on your smartphone, you can do that. If you're lucky enough and have the privilege, you can also put the Chrome extension on your browser. I know that a lot of people are limited in what they can do to their uh, business their business uh, computer and how locked down it is. Um, so I really like um, the Google Authenticator. Um, because it's always there and I don't have to worry about any network issues. Uh, the SMS is also really easy though. It just sends you the code when you need. Please know that the codes that you receive are only good for three minutes. So if you um, go ahead and log in and you haven't received your SMS for five minutes, it's probably not gonna work and you need to do it again. Um, it may be that your network is, is providing slow access to your text. Um, for the Google Authenticator, and we do have um, an MFA help video here that you can access, but you simply go to the app store. You could download Google Authenticator. I like it because it's free and it allows you to put in as many uh, uh, accounts as you want. Um, and so, and it, and it works really well and it's easy, it's easy to use. And so you simply go to the app store, you download Google Authenticator, you install it on your app, and then I will show you where you're going to uh, scan the QR code using the app. And so, yes, I understand MFA. Um, here we know that we um, have the U UEI and the cage code. So the UEI is the SAM, the SAM number that has been given to you um, and your cage code. Right now, um, your cage code may be different. If you, have, um, if you have multiple cage codes in SAM, please ensure that you're using the correct cage code as well when you register. If you only have one cage code for your organization, then you don't have to worry about it. Um, sometimes when people register and their companies have more than one cage code, they may register under the wrong cage code, which is exactly like a different organization, even if it is the same UEI number. So we're going to make sure that we have the correct UEI and cage code. And that this is also the prime for the proposal. 
So this is, if you are a JV, this is the prime JV entity with all the JV members underneath it, you would register using the prime JV's entity. If you are obviously a, a, um, a mentor protege, then it is the JV UEI's number that you guys created when you created that, that agreement, okay? So it's not the mentor and it's not the protege. It would be the prime entity for that, for that relationship. And then if it's a prime subcontractor, it's the prime, okay? So again, please make sure that you're using the correct UEI. So that is the prime entity that you are bidding under. So if Polaris were to award you a contract, that is the UEI that you will be receiving this under. So I do know my correct UEI and that your SAM record for your company is made public for uh, registration uh, purposes. And so I have all that information. I'm gonna go ahead and begin. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get, get my UEI. Remember when DUNS was so easy? DUNS was easy to remember and UEI, oh, wrong one. DUNS was easy to, uh... but how are we supposed to remember that one? And so I'm gonna also enter in my cage code just to make sure I have the correct, I mean, I'm sure Amazon only has one, one cage code, right? They're so small. So I'm gonna look up the organization. It's telling me that it's Amazon Web Services. It's correct. That is this the correct cage code? It is correct. And so what we do is we bring all of this information in from Sam and we preload it into the system. This keeps you from having to, having to continually enter in information over and over again, right? Like how many times you have to fill out your name, your organization, your UEI number. So we're hopefully gonna save you some trouble on that. Um, and you're simply gonna ask, enter your first name and your last name and your password. You're gonna confirm it. Um, we have the rules there for you. And then here is the MFA. So you can either select SMS. And if you do that, you're gonna select your mobile carrier, put in your phone number. You should receive a validation text. Um, you would enter that six digit code in here um, and then you would be done with it. Um, if you have the Authenticator app at this point, this is when you show this QR code you would open the app and add plus and then show the QR code to your phone. It's automatic and then link this to your, uh, to your browser. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my phone right now and scan it and then enter in my code to verify. If you do not finish this part, okay, so I am scanning my QR code, it's done. Okay, and I will enter it in right now. I just had to wait for it to get to the next one. And so I would validate it. If you do not complete this part, um, you're, you're not completely registered. Okay, so you'll notice because I am not authorized to just come into any company and register under that UEI, um, we have some security features in place. If you are, and because we hit SAM, we can verify if you are a SAM listed POC. If you are a SAM listed POC, when you register for Symphony, you will automatically be activated. If you are not a SAM POC, you're going to get this message. And it basically says that you, um, for security purposes, you've been act you need to be activated by your Symphony administrator. We cannot activate you. You can only be activated by the person who is authorized for your company. We have no way to verify if you are able to submit a proposal on behalf of your company. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. Now I'm going to log in using the person I just used. And I'm going to go ahead and sign in and you will get this message. Your account is inactive. This doesn't mean there's something wrong. It just means that you still need to be activated. And so if you know who your SAM POC, it's a good chance that that person um, is uh, is already registered in the system and then they can go ahead and activate you. So send them an email and ask them to log into Symphony and activate you. If nobody else has registered in the system prior to this, so there is not a, um, a Symphony administrator already for your organization, you will be done, you will be shown the SAM POCs for your company. Okay. So you would have received a different message um, at the end of your registration. And it's going to tell you who the, don't disregard that that screen, don't just skip past it and try to log in. 
um, it has important information on it and it will tell you exactly who you need to let know that they need to actually go and register in Symphony, okay? And there's even a link there um, that basically pre-populates an email for you um, that you can send to them. So I'm gonna go ahead now and sign in as the administrator for, for this account. Okay, so when I registered with this user, I was able to, I need to get rid of, I get rid of the, the Zoom stuff. Okay, so you'll notice up here when I come into Symphony as an administrator, um, if I'm not an administrator, I would not have this link here, but this is your dashboard. Um, you come in here and you can see the four solicitations that are currently available for you. Um, don't remember, or don't forget, if you're submitting on the other two, they are due uh, next Friday. Um, and then if I were in the administrator, I would be able to go in here and simply look at all the people that are registered in here. And so I could see that Sebastian and Soren have tried to register. Sarah's registered, I'd have already activated her, and I'd made her the open market proposal manager. This means that she can submit a proposal on behalf of your organization, but she can't activate any more users. So if you're maybe using a third party person to help you put together your stuff, you can uh, give them this, uh, this, this role. So if I were to go into Sebastian's account, I simply would go in here and activate him. And then I would say that this, this button does not actually work until you make a change. Now, if I want to go ahead and make Sebastian an administrator as well, um, I can go ahead and do that in this way. Not only am I responsible for activating people, but I can go ahead and make him that. So now he has the ability to log in and see this link as well. If I wanna make Sebastian the open market proposal manager, I can do that. But as administrator, he also has privileges. So you don't have to do that. Um, if you need to see other information about them, that's there, so I can go back and then I can also activate Soren. And Soren is just gonna help us build out some of the data that we need in there. So I'm gonna activate him, but that's he's just gonna have that. So he's not allowed to actually submit on behalf of our company. So let's go back to what you see when you first log in. So you'll notice over here that there are asked questions. This is what we call the dashboard, the solicitation dashboard. And this has all the solicitations that are available for you to bid on. Um, when these are no longer available, um, you would not see these buttons here, but either if you submitted it or um, nothing available for you. Um, you'll notice up here, we have another link called My Company. Um, my company is like your company's resume. And this is where you put in all of your assets and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But I'm gonna go into the ask questions. I'm gonna kind of go in order. So my company is basically all your reusable assets across all of your proposals. So that means if you're using the same projects for each one of these, you don't have to enter it in four times. You simply put it into my company and then you put it in here. You would have to customize it for at the, the individual things, but you're only gonna to have to customize a couple of items of data, but not the whole thing. So we're gonna bring this, bring everything in there for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask, I'm gonna close this one out since I'm not really focused on that one. And I'm gonna go ahead and ask questions. And so when I come in here, you'll notice that I'm supposed to put in a reference to the station and I can go ahead and put in like L.5.2.1. Don't have to correct me if I'm wrong, and I can just say, you know, what was first paragraph. And I'll go ahead and save and add. And you'll notice that it gets added down here to my list of questions. You'll also notice that it's unsubmitted. So these questions have not been submitted. If you are creating a bunch of questions, um, .3. Um, I know that that's not the Merkle thing, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and save it. But if you want somebody um, else on your team to be able to review them, they could log in, they can re review them, they can edit them um, and make changes to it. It was the second paragraph we were referring to. 
And then um, they can also say, well, that's a ridiculous question and they can delete it. So however you wanna manage it, but please know that it has not been submitted yet. Um, you may submit them up into the deadline. You may edit them and delete them up into the deadline, um, but you must submit them before the deadline. If they're not submitted, then they're not submitted. So just like you would email and then let's see that you have no unsubmitted questions. Um, Christina, are there any questions regarding anything that I've gone over so far? No, I think okay. you'll cover the other questions later. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go um, back to the dashboard. Actually, I'm gonna go into my company now and show you the assets. So in my company, and if you have already built out previous um, proposals or offers for the other two uh, solicitations, you'll see that you already have a lot of information in here. Um, you might have some team members in here. You might have some Merkles in here. You do not have to use these team members or Merkles for the next two, next two offers, but they are just part of your company resume. You don't have to use any of the past performances that you may have already created those two are selected inside of the submission. Okay, so just know that this is kind of like everything that has to do with your company. And so I'm gonna um, go back to the company and um, it's overview. And you'll see we have team members, we have all the projects, and then we have um, all the documents that you currently have in here. And you can see them all organized according to projects and any team members that you might have, any of the business factors that you put in here, you can go ahead and have them in there. And these are all things that are part of your company. This is not your proposal. This is just a collection of all your assets. And you can work in here, and then you'll see that once you add them to your proposal, it's really easy just to put it all in there. So I would suggest that you start with the My Company, um, you play with it, um, don't be afraid of breaking it, uh, if you find something, you know, that you, you know, want to look at more in detail, go for it. Like, don't be afraid to put something in here. If I want to delete something, I can. Um, okay. We will warn you if you have added it to a proposal uh, before you are able to delete it, though, and ask that you actually um, uh, make that change before you delete something. So we want to make sure that we're, we're not allowing you just to delete things that you've included in the proposal you have not submitted. If you have submitted documents for a project um, and then you're looking at the two, if you submitted uh, projects in a previous uh, solicitation and then you notice that, oh, I, you know, I need to also add this one or maybe there's been a, an option, uh, you know, modification or something like that that you wanna add to this that increases your score somehow, you can add that to that. Don't worry about it. When your other proposal is submitted and you don't have to worry about that for a week, but when your other proposal is submitted, um, it's considered a separate entity. And so anything that you do in here will not affect what, they, what, they, what you've already submitted. Okay, so I'm gonna go back then to my SAM data. This is pulled directly from SAM. Um, if you see any problems or have any uh, things in here that aren't right, please know that you need to go back to SAM to make those changes. If you make the change in SAM, go ahead and just shoot us a quick email at the, um, at the help desk and we'll go ahead and refresh it for you. Um, we don't give you the ability to automatically refresh your data because using the API, um, sometimes with SAM was a little sensitive. Um, so we like to make sure that we do it in a controlled fashion and not just keep refreshing things until it happens. So this is not, this is not where it, so you just need to make sure that you use SAM as the, um, it's, it's basically the source of truth for your company data, and then we can refresh it. I'm gonna go ahead now and show you team members. Right now, I don't have any team members. I am currently the prime. Um, if I want to add a new team member, I will simply click on here. I'm gonna go ahead and get my other UEI for another very small company you may never have heard of. And you have your different member types. These are the types of, um, that you can select. So if you wanna add a subcontractor to it, if you wanna add a joint venture member, if you wanna add a joint venture subcontractor, meaning that one of your joint ventures is also has a subcontractor that they're bringing to the team. Um, if you are a mentor and an S SBA mentor protege program, which means that you are also a JV member, 
um, or the protege in the SBA protege, um, protege in SBA mentor protege program. Okay, both of these are also JV member types. Um, we just don't have it say JV member. So if there's any confusion right there, um, I'm going to go ahead and add in a JV member. And my JV member is this company. Let's go ahead and confirm them. Oh, Microsoft, yes. So I'm going to go ahead and add Microsoft as my JV member. <clears throat> and we will confirm, you can confirm that. You'll notice that a lot of things in here are very deliberate um, because we know we want you to make sure that you are putting in exactly what you want. So as a JV member, I know that I need to uh, include many of the same business factors that we can use as part of our, as part of our um, either scoring or requirements for the cessation. So I'm gonna go through and just add a few of them. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in. Is that approved audit, is that auditing accounting system and all that. So we'll go ahead and I'm sure that Microsoft has a DCA. So you can add in one at a time there, you'll notice, or if I want to, I can add in more by simply dragging them in here from my, uh, from my browser. Please note that you cannot drag, drag documents directly from a SharePoint um, or from like a Google Drive. It doesn't work that way. Um, it has to come off of a hard drive off your computer. So please don't try to, um, to drag documents over from SharePoint, it won't work. Okay, so I certified that um, this claim, and I'm gonna go ahead and save it. Um, you can download the document if you need to, you can also delete it if you need to. Um, please know that you will need to uncertify it first before you delete it. So again, something else that's just intentional. So we want you to intentionally include and, and uninclude claims and documents in your system. Oh, and I need to select the correct one. So I'm going to go ahead and select DCA. And as soon as that happens, you'll see that it gets claimed. I'm going to go ahead and enter in a CMMI maturity level. Up here, you'll notice that I'm going to select the level that we are. And then I'm also gonna select the type, meaning services or development. So you can't have both, you can only have one. You may have both, but for purposes of this solicitation, you can choose one of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose services. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my document for CMMI to here. My network is running very slowly. So that's been added in here, certify. And then you can add this for all of your team members. I know for a fact that we need to include our GSA 527 so that I don't have that warning. The warning is so oh, here it is. If you try to um, do anything that is requiring a document without uploading the document, you're not gonna be allowed to, and we'll give you a warning about that. Um, so you can see here that these are all of the, uh, the documents that I have in here. I also am going to, um, I'm also going to include the teaming documents, so the teaming agreements that we have. And so if I go back here and select the teaming agreements, while the hamsters in my modem decide what they're doing. And I'm gonna to go to teaming agreements and go ahead and add that in there. And so now these are all the documents for, for my team. I can see who they are. I can see all the documents that I have in there. I can always go back and edit this. I can always go back and make changes. I can always go back and delete them and start over. Um, I can always, do things too. So if I want to go ahead and edit it, I can simply go in here, go into documents, and I have the ability to edit the documents there. Okay. Merkle's works the same way. I won't torture you with um, going through that process again, um, but just know that Merkle's works the same way, except for the fact that the documents that you upload 
for your Merkle and business factors are considered your own. So you would just attach them in your business factors here because a Merkle is a closed relationship. Okay, so it's just handled differently. Whereas the team members, we need to verify that they have all the requirements. And so if I go into past performances, you'll see that I've already pre-entered it. So you don't have to be tortured with me entering in all of these project information. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a new project. And so you're just gonna simply put in a name. And then you're gonna select the type of contract, okay? And the type of contract, meaning that if it's commercial or US federal type, meaning a standalone contract, we have the FAR here. Um, you'll know from looking at the scorecard, I'm sure that some of these have extra points associated with them, whether you have more than one or whether or not it's um, <clears throat> um, a uh, multi-award. And so you can see that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a um, multi-award contract. And please re um, review the solicitation for the types of things that you get points for. I think sometimes there's a confusion, um, but please refer back to the solicitation for any questions on scoring. Um, Claris has verified that this is valid. Um, and so if you have any questions, um, please refer back to the solicitation. I'm gonna go ahead and enter in the contract number. And then the task order number, since it was one of those. And then I'm gonna, it's gonna ask me for who the customer of the project is. And so we can go ahead and select um, HHS. Um, please know that sometimes, and I'll show you in a minute, this is not the, what we're looking for for your customer, the unique customers, <clears throat> the unique customer account. We're looking for the unique customer account here, okay? And so this is, where you're going to get. So if I have HHS CDC, I have HHS Clinical Center, I have HHS NIH, whatever I have in here that's different is going to count as a different customer. Okay, so please ensure that you're looking um, in the correct uh, department uh, for, your, for your agency. So I'm going to go ahead and select Indian Health Services. And then who is the prime contractor for this project? So was it me or was it Microsoft? So if you put in a Merkle or a team member or yourself, obviously you were asking who the prime contractor is. The prime contractor being who had the contract with the government, right? So if you are doing, if you are putting in here a subcontract, okay, and I'm gonna go back up here real quick and show you. So if I say that this is a commercial project, and the customer was, I don't know, Lockheed, another com small company, right? Lockheed Martin. Because they had the prime contract with the government, right? You did not, you were a subcontract here. Okay, and I'm gonna get rid of that. So I'm gonna go back to the other one. But just so you know that, so if you were to say who was the customer for this project, it is you, even though Lockheed had the thing, but this is a commercial, a commercial contract. It's not a federal contract, even though Lockheed has a contract with the government. So I'm gonna go back to, back to here and go ahead and set this guy again. But I just wanted to show you that you would then type in the new list. So we have Health and Human Services, Indian Health Service, and then I'm gonna say that Microsoft was the prime on this one. And I'm gonna upload my documents. Okay, actually, I'm going to cancel this real quick. Okay, so this seems to be an area of confusion. So we have in here what are called tags. And tags are basically just generic tags that you can put in your document. So if I were to, um, so if I were to have a PDF document, and I'm going to go ahead and show that to you in a minute, I have a PDF document, and I want to put in a um, a text note or um, a sticky note, if they call it that. But I'm going to put in one of these in the document that I'm using to validate my claim. So, and I'm going to let me close this right now. Let me get out of here real quick. And then let me get in here. 
That's not the one I'm looking for. I'm looking for this one. Okay. So when I create my documents and I can upload as many documents to sort of support a project as possible, right? And so inside of those documents, I'm simply gonna add, oh, there it is. Can you, I don't know, can you see that, Christina? Yeah. Okay, great, that's POP, okay? That's the period of performance, okay? This is TCV, the total contract, the total value, including options, right? And you're gonna put this sticky note or note or tag inside of the document where your document is showing. And you can have multiple. So maybe you have three modifications for option periods, right? So you include all three of those and you just simply put this in there where it shows what the, what the, where the total contract value is. And so this way you can ensure that the evaluators are looking exactly where you're making your claim, okay? And so I wanted to do that real quick before. And say now, right here, I'm using this for an emerging technology. And so you can make up any tag that you want. So if you are preparing your documents for this, um, I'm gonna put in artificial intelligence, and then I'm gonna copy that right there for some reason. I think, cause I'm sharing, it's not letting me, there we go. No. Anyway, I know that it says artificial intelligence all as one word. That is the tag that I'm gonna use. And when I go ahead and and put the tags in, and I'll show you where you're gonna put them. Um, I'm gonna do that. And you can prepare all your documents prior to uploading them and then um, upload them, you know, into the project we're using it. You can also use, you know, multiple projects or multiple documents to support it. They can have the same tag. You can use um, the same document for multiple emerging technologies. For instance, if I have artificial intelligence and edge computing in here, then I can go ahead and tag this area for artificial intelligence. And then down here, this area for edge computing. So it just, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be the same, the same document because you're going to go ahead and just put it in there. And what this is, again, it allows the evaluators to simply find the, and validate your claims more easily. I mean, if you're putting in a scope document that's 100 pages long and you want the evaluators to now read this 100 page document, and they will, to find out where you're validating your claim, um, it's probably a lot better and maybe safer on your part to put in exactly where it is that's validating your claim. Now, tags are not required but it's probably your benefit and probably in the benefit of the evaluators if you have them in there. And so now I'm gonna go back to, I know there's a way to hide the zoom control thing. I'm gonna go back to here. And then, Okay, so I've tagged my documents and I'm gonna go ahead and um, if you have any questions, again, these are the ones that we put in here. So you didn't have to come up with your own tags for those. I'm gonna go ahead and browse my files. Um, again, you can just drag and drop as many files in here as you want at a time. Please note that there is a 20 meg per file uh, limitation um, due to security, not due to the system. Um, but due to security. So they only allow us to upload 20 megs per file at a time. However, you can upload 120 meg files. So there is no limitation on the number of files you can upload. It's just that the actual file itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and include, um, um, let's see, I don't wanna do all of those. Let's say I wanna do these guys. I'm gonna go ahead and add all of those in there. And then you'll see all of them are being added. They've all been added to your thing. I'm gonna go ahead and save and continue. And these are all of my project files for this single project. And then I can reference them in the, in the future when I go to here. So I'm gonna say past uh, period of performance. And let's just go ahead and enter in um, this. And then just say this, okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select the, the reference for it. So um, for the reference, we'll go ahead and use the contract. 
and that's going to show where the POP is being referenced. For the contract value, I can go ahead and put in the contract value, wishful thinking on all the small business parts, right? And then I'm going to verify the contract um, is where it's showing the TCP. Now, again, if I had another document or another document, I can include as many documents as I wanted in there to show, like, for instance, if there's multiple option periods or they're renewing or, or they're changing or updating the thing. And then I'm going to go ahead and enter in the code for this. I'm going to go ahead and 541519. And then is this cost reimbursement? Let's get the extra points. I'll say yes. And now these data fields right here are not required for Polaris. Um, there are other solicitations coming down the pike that may require them. You can just ignore them. You don't have to do anything with them. Um, they are not required for Polaris. Um, Oconus is, um, if it's, it's available, you can go ahead and select Oconus. And again, teaming, same thing, not required by Polaris. We have optional here. You don't have to do anything with it. Um, there will be no, there's no information required there. Um, past performance rating, whether it's positive, neg negative, or um, unable to obtain, um, you can look in the station for how they score that, how they take into account the unable to obtain um, positive and negatives. Okay, and we use the same algorithm they have um, in there. So I'm going to go ahead and positive and put in my C pars. Okay, at this point, I have a overview of my project with all the information in there. Don't worry, if you want to make changes later on, you can. Um, this is not set in stone yet. Um, until you actually submit. So I can always go back in here and make a change simply by clicking edit project. I can also delete it. Um, so if you were playing around and you entered in a fake project, go ahead and get rid of it. But I'm gonna go ahead and edit the project real quick and say, oh, this is demo project seven. Okay. And so now that I've saved it, um, I'm gonna head into business factors. I have not done anything with my proposal yet. These are just a collection again of all of the stuff that it could be part of my solicitation. And one of the great things is if you put all your projects in here that you think you might wanna use, I'm gonna show you, you can actually play around with it and see how you get the best score. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and select um, um, CMMI for myself as well. Remember I did that for uh, my team member but I'm going to go ahead and select it for us as well. And then I think I'm going to go into the, um, into the uh, proposal next so that you can, you can see what it looks like right now. So I have put in kind of everything I want to wanted to do, um, I can look at here right now and I can go into my dashboard. And again, my fan sounds like my computer is about to take off. So I've already started building out this one right here. And you'll notice that this one has not been started and that there's a, um, a live score of zero. So if I were to go in here and continue with working on my submission, you'll see that I've added my points of contact by going in here. Um, I can show you real quick on how to do that. So I'm going to assign the contract manager. So should you get a contract um, with Polaris, um, you will need points of contact for them. Um, and so you would need to go ahead and include those in there. You can either assign yourself or a registered user. And registered user means somebody who has registered in Symphony. And so then I would get a choice of who is in here. And I go ahead and save that. And then those are the people that would be included as part of my as part of my proposal. I can also see that I don't have any team members yet, right? I have, I know that I added Microsoft as a team member. And I know that in past performances that if I were to try and add that project right here, I'm gonna get a warning 
that I didn't add that person as, or that company as a team member. And so I'm gonna have to go back to team members. And I can just simply add Microsoft to my, to my, uh, to my team, to my group. I'm gonna go in here real quick to live score. You'll notice in here that I haven't really done a whole lot. And so we have a bunch of warnings here and it looks a little scary, um, but these are here to help you um, make sure that you are compliant. Now, because um, this is Amazon and Microsoft partnering, I'm probably never gonna get rid of this warning in the solicitation because we do check sound. Um, and that Microsoft is not a small business um, by any stretch of the imagination. So I'm not gonna get rid of that one as well. Um, but I also need to have three primary relevant experiences in order to be compliant. Um, I am missing my uncompensated overtime policy, which is part of the responsibility. Um, so I would have to go into the business factors and update that. And as you start completing this, so this is here to help you, right? I have an ad in my SF33. Um, and I think that um, because we are in the SUBO, um, I need to have at least one small disabled veteran owned business project, right? So I'm gonna go back to, um, I don't have any Merkles, so I can't add anybody in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and start adding my projects. So you notice that I've already added in one project. I'm gonna go ahead and add another one in. Um, another one. Now you'll notice that my points haven't changed. Why? Because I'm adding all these really crazy valuable projects. My scores and change. It's because you haven't declared whether or not these are a primary relevant experience. And you'd simply do that in your performance factors. So performance factors relates to how uh, this affects your solicitation. And so I'm gonna go in here and begin customizing this for the solicitation. Yes, you will have to do it for each one of the proposals, but this is really the only additional data that you'll need to enter in for your individual submission once you've completed all your data in my company. And that's because um, you need to make sure that you're getting all of your points for emerging technologies. You might not have used the same projects on all of their proposals. Um, and then you need to also declare that this is a primary relevant experience. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. Um, you'll notice that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add this as a emerging technology. And let's go ahead and say that this is artificial intelligence. And then I need to, if I try to save an update, it's gonna tell me that I need to put a file in here for a reference. So I'm gonna put in the contract reference. And then you can select up to two projects that are gonna represent your cybersecurity. Um, please make sure you, you have the correct ones. I'll go ahead and use this one as that one as well. And then I will go ahead and save an update. So I've done that. Wow, did my score jump? Because that was a great project, right? And so if I go to my live score, I'm gonna see that all these points were given to me for, for those projects. And so this is, this is really looking great. And so I've already added, these all had positive, um, positive CPARs. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this one right now and say that this is a, I'm not going to give it emerging technology. And then I'm going to do this one real quick. And say that this one is a lot of experience. If you only are using this for emerging technology, don't click the primary relative experience. You would just simply select the emerging technology so that you can get your points for that. That's my dog, sorry. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the last one. I'm gonna go ahead and just say that this is an emerging technology and this is immersive. And so we have all of these. You notice that my score has gone up to here. Um, and I can go ahead and check out my live score and see where I'm getting, I think so. I lost the warning for not having three relevant experience projects, um, but I have not lost the warning for the small disadvantaged or disabled better known. So that's gonna be in here because of who I'm using, I'm not gonna be able to get rid of that. Um, you'll also notice that my SF33 has not been uploaded. Um, that's fine. I mean, the, 
the cessation just came out, um, there might be uh, an amendment and an SF30 um, so that you want to get all those in together, you can do that. Um, and I'll show you where you'd be able to put all of those. Um, I do want to go ahead and clean up these three things real quick so you can see what a cleaner, what a cleaner um, uh, um, submission looks like. And so we're going to continue walking through there. Um, I'm going to show you on the scorecard too. So remember, unique NAICS codes, and this is a question that um, many people have had, a unique NAICS code starts with the count of two, okay, meaning that one NAICS code is not unique yet, it needs to be unique in comparison to another NAICS code. So um, the, the, the point for Polaris would be uh, 500 for two unique NAICS codes, um, 1,000 for three, uh, 1,500 for four, and then 2,000 for five unique NAICS codes. Um, but it's not gonna count, you wouldn't get 2,000 for four. You have to have the, um, you have to have five. So the count would start at two. And that's just a, a question that has come up many times. So we wanna make sure that I get that in there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get in my, um, oh, what are we doing? So oh, I need to, sorry. See, I'm trying to do this inside of the submission and I have to go back to my company um, to do your business factors. So I'm gonna go back to business factors and I'm gonna go ahead and add in my reps and certs because that was a warning. And then I'm going to do my 527. I believe there was one, one other thing that I needed to do. And I think that was my and compensated over time. But the system will tell me what I'm missing. Okay, so I've done that. We'll go back to my submission. And I will now go ahead and look at my scorecard to see what it's still missing. Uh, so I need the reps and search for all of the JV members. So we are keeping track of the fact that um, any members or team members you have, you must include the reps and search for all of those. And I still need my professional employee compensation plan. But before I go back there and correct that, um, let's take a look at my scorecard. So I have one cybersecurity project. I have past performance. I have a submission that has two or more um, cost reimbursement type projects. So I'm getting the full points for that, right? I have three projects with different emerging technologies. I have three unique customers. Um, unique customers are also based on whether or not it's a primary relevant experience. So just because it's an emerging technology, it will not count towards the, um, <clears throat> towards the count. Um, I have three unique emerging technologies and I have um, three primary um, unique submission has three unique primary NAICS, Alconis, and then the demo project, CMMI, and then all of the points for all of these down here. So now I'm going to go back to the dashboard. I'm just going to show you something real quick before I do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and notice I have zero points here. I'm gonna go ahead and start my submission. Because you've already put in all of your business factors, um, you're gonna actually get a couple points start on you. And because I don't have any team members, I am um, uh, getting automatic points for the organizational risk assessment. As soon as you add a team member, you lose those 5,000 until you claim it and upload your certification and documentation for that. But again, I don't have any team members in here. I don't have any projects in here. 
Um, and then, um, and so I think that would be it. Yeah, so if I were to review it, I'm gonna see all the same warnings that I have in there. So I'm gonna go back to my dashboard and I'm going to submit this one by finishing up my submission documents. We will not prevent you from submitting um, something that if you're missing. So if you are missing your documents and you see those warnings in your review, um, again, it's your proposal. We're not going to prevent you from submitting it. We're gonna hopefully help you um, create the best uh, the best proposal that you you know you can do, but we are not responsible for you to create a valid and complete proposal. Um, so the SF33 is also the SF30. So if there's any SF30s that you need to include, you can just include them right in here by simply selecting this. This is in submission documents. Right here, I'm going to select the SF33. And then I go ahead and browse the SF33. I'm going to add that in there. And then I also have the ability to add um, the confidentiality statement. This is not required, um, but it is, um, excuse me, but you can include that in there to uh, provide a general confidentiality statement for your entire, for your entire uh, contract. And then the JP Joint Ventures Working Qualifications. This you do not need. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and review now. And again, I can still submit. What I, you know, what's going on here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I can open all these panels and go ahead and print um, this out for you. I'm going to cancel that, but you can print it to PDF. Um, I can open all the panels that you can see an overview of everything that is in your submission. If you wanna keep it for your records, it's obviously very long, um, but once it's filled in, um, you would have a record of everything that's in here, including all the documents, all of your business factors right there. Again, this is your entire submission. And then you're going to certify that you have the ability to submit this. If you are not an administrator or the open market um, proposal manager, you're not going to see this and you're not going to be able to submit it. And so, you know, there you have it. So if you have the permissions, you'll see it right here. And I can go ahead and submit it. It's a little early. And so I'm submitting it. However, I just remember that I didn't put in my 527. I remember seeing that warning and I hit it so fast. So I can always go back in here. And again, if I have permissions, I can go ahead and modify my submission up into the deadline, right? And so I'm gonna go ahead and open it back up again. Okay, so now I can go ahead and um, make my thing. So I can go back into my business factor um, and I can go ahead and upload my professional, uh, my professional compensation by going back to my company and get rid of that error. So, so don't worry, you could submit it if it's submitted. Um, and it's not the deadline yet, you can always open it up again and, um, and make edits to it. Um, you have, you know, you have time to do that. Um, and then everything is uploaded in here. And so, you know, you're just at that point hitting submit button. And so you don't have to worry about network issues at that point. Um, you know, obviously it closes at exactly uh, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so if you are um, waiting until 3.59 and 30 seconds, click quickly, <laughs> um, but you probably don't want to wait that long. Um, I just want to see if there's anything else that I want to go through um, with you. Um, just a couple of quick things. Please note that the project title shouldn't be over 250 characters. Um, we will give you an error, but um, it doesn't like that. Um, Yeah, so the tagging instructions, there are, there is information in, and I can show you in the help. Um, when you enter in, so if I were to go back to, um, let me go back to, am I in my company? Yeah. So I'm going to go back in here. 
Okay, and I simply took the documents that I uploaded to support this thing. And before I uploaded them, I went in using, you know, you're gonna convert them to PDF and I added a sticky note or a tag. And so if I were to, so we're gonna give you a warning that you're using this product, um, that this project for many things, right? And so let me go into the project details. So this is where the tag was, right? So rather than you having to make up your own tag for TCV, um, we're just telling you that you can just add that in there. It's only with the performance factors on the inside of the submission where you can create your own and you can just enter in anything that you want there um, to support it. Um, you know, like, as I said, artificial intelligence. So then I would simply add in artificial intelligence to the tag. So if I were to go uh, back in here and I'll show you where that was. I'm going to go ahead and continue my submission. I'm, I'm just seeing some of the questions popping up on the chat, so I'm trying to address them. Let's say I already go in here. Oh, went to the wrong place. Right here. So I can type in uh, artificial intelligence. Because that's what I put in my sticky note, if you recall. Um, I just typed in artificial intelligence. So this is what is displayed to evaluators when they're looking at your stuff. And they can go ahead and um, click on the document and it'll go to that area. I hope I answered that. Can you show what it looks like in the project review page at this point once you save that? Oh, sure. Okay. So there's the file you referenced. And so this is a, yeah, so this is the document. And then this is the file reference for where it would be in that location. It's like a fine feature, but it's a little bit more enhanced on the evaluation side. It's just so that we can ensure that the evaluators can find what you want them to find. Okay, so is there something else? Are there any other questions that we have? We, we have some time right now for mm. some answers. You can also show on the review screen that you could see this project review information there in that panel. Right here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are all, when we can open, as we recall, I have the open all panels button right there. And so then it's going to open. So this is basically the, re the receipt of your, of your, um, again, tags are optional. Okay. You don't have to put them in there. And so if, if it's something that you just don't think that, you know, you can follow, that's fine. I mean, but if it's something that you, there's documentation on it inside the help, and I haven't really gone in here to show you all the help information, um, but there's tons of articles, um, there's videos, and you can, um, you can follow along with that, and it's easy to search on. The location in a file. Okay, so I keep doing that. So the location of file, that is the tag. That is the tag that I'm referring to. So this is basically saying that right here, the location in the file is where that sticky note is that we typed in this into the sticky note. The other tags are the same way. So for instance, if I have in a sticky note, I have um, my primary rel 
experience. If I'm going to use that as my tag throughout all my documents, then I can just go ahead and put this into into the um, So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new sticky note. Save this right here is showing where all of my, um, let's go ahead and say annotate with a note. I'm using preview. Um, any of the PDF things will have some kind of note or sticky note or something that they'll call it. I'm gonna type that in right there, right? And that is now going to say that this is where, this is where my experience is demonstrated, right? And then up here, I'll add another note. Maybe it's the same document, right? Maybe it's a different document. And then another note right here, and it's gonna say total contract value, TCV, which is the, the tags that we gave you. Um, and then you would say this. Demonstrates. Right? Now you can either put stuff in there. Don't put a dissertation in here. Your document should speak for itself. They're going to read the document. Um, so uh, explaining it in there is not going to help, but making sure that they know where to look for it so that your document can explain it to them would help. So did that make sense? Do you see any others? Any other questions? No, that's, I think we're good. Wow. Yeah. What? Smart group. <laughs> um, just a note and Lori, um, if, uh, I don't know if you wanted me to bring it up about contacting you directly, if you have any questions about the UEI, um, or if you wanted to, um, uh, any other things that you wanted to discuss. Nothing from our team. Okay, great. Uh, again, there's tons of documentation in there. There's search features, there's more videos than you'd ever care to watch. Um, again, we're here to help you um, technically. Um, we can't guide you in how to build your solicitation, um, but we can provide you with how to put it into Symphony. Thanks, Shannon. And could you provide the email address again one more time, just in case they do have questions as they're in the Symphony system and cannot yeah, locate so, it? Yeah, so let me just go right here real quick. So the Zoom, the Zoom menu keeps getting in my way. Okay. So you can simply go in here and then you can basically information that you need um, if you still can't get help with everything that's in here. And this is just before you even come into Symphony. So know that once you're inside of Symphony, there's a ton more information. Um, then you're simply gonna create a new support ticket by clicking here, okay? And then that's going to give you a um, direct line to us. So, um, yeah. So, and if you need to contact us outside, it's client.support at apexlogic.com. Sounds good. I know I've seen a couple questions about uh, recording of this session. We do plan to provide that to you and we'll provide the information and links within the SAM.gov posting. Jen, if there's nothing else, uh, I think we will conclude the session. We may stay on just for a few moments if there are any questions that pop up in the Q&A pod. Great. Well, thank you all for joining us today. I hope it was helpful. And again, we will plan to share the recording information with you via sam.gov in the near future. Thank you all.